Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, well, March 23rd, and we're getting closer and closer to... Now, what do you think I'm going to say, right? What do you think I'm saying? No, it's, that's not what I'm going to say. I'm, what I'm talking about is we're getting closer and closer to Superman versus Batman. That's what we're getting I close to. I thought you were going to say Easter. See, I know. <laughs> or Donald Trump or something with that. Yeah, yeah. You so, had me going. I know. I, I thought uh, I would fool you by that urgency and what you think that it was going to be about. But I no. It, I think it's already out. No, it's out tonight, uh, tomorrow night. No, I think it's out in L.A. and New York. Oh, well, it's been getting really good reviews. So, yeah, it has to get be out for it to be given reviews. Yeah. Uh, Chad, my oldest son, has already gotten his ticket, and he's going to go see it tomorrow night. To see if it's going to be okay for him to take his uh, three-year-old son to go see it. And I think that's just he wants to see it by himself so nobody bothers him or anything like that. Because he has been looking forward to this. Uh, And he said it's gotten really good reviews. The uh, critics have started saying, you know, sniping at it. But he said nobody cares about what they say. It's what the people say. And they they love it. So uh, that's exciting. But yes, Easter is coming up. Man, it's this Sunday. Have you got your e- the eggs colored, uh, Richard? No. Are you cooking? No. Well, what are you going to do? I'm focusing on FM. <laughs> Richard, you're working day and night uh, getting this, you know, this radio station ready to go FM. But I'm telling you, you've got to give yourself some rest. You know, you're going to lose your girlfriend if you uh, spend all the time just working on this. Or is she that understanding? I know Holly's understanding, but is she that understanding, Richard? Yeah, that's the that's the nice thing about relationships. Is uh-huh. You communicate, <laughs> and you tell them what you're you're trying to do, and yeah, and you help them understand if they don't understand. Right, you're you're telling her what uh, what you're going to do, and uh, what you need to be doing. But what about her? I mean, what about her needs? But what if she says no, we have an open door policy? You, she can tell me whatever minute, she wants to do. No, that's not what you mean. You don't mean open door policy. <laughs> You, well, she shouldn't be afraid to talk to me. Yes. Well, does she have to call and make reservations with you and Sometimes. say, "Hey, uh, can we?" Talk I, to you each know, other? it's really funny about that. I ran into so many problems for like Easter and especially plans. Is people always call me around Thursday, Friday, and say something along the lines of, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm already doing something," and they're like, "Well, why can't we ever hang out?" Because like, you call me the day before you want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm already doing something. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, I'm t- I'm telling you, um, Richard, you know the girl that gets Richard, and I think Holly's got him. I think she's got him. Is going to be so fortunate because she has someone that you always know what he's thinking. There's not a lot of filter, but he is very, very thoughtful in the sense that when he takes a girl out, he thinks about it. he thinks about what he's going to do and make sure it's romantic. And it's uh, it's like amazing because you don't think of Richard is doing that, but he, but he really is. He's he's very sweet and uh, and caring. It's just sometimes he has to get in his boss mode and see. Since I'm I'm like, what well, quasi employee? Would you consider me employee? Except no. that you don't pay me. Okay, all right. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm this volunteer person, and so you think that he would be very sweet to me and never complain about things I don't do, but that's not the truth, is it, Richard? No, 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 no. And you don't and you don't mind telling me what you think, do you, Richard? Nope. See, so Richard has a very well uh, well balanced, you know, mental you know capacity that he he really does it doesn't bother him if you if you say something mean or hateful or whatever to him he just lets it roll off his back and he is uh but he's a great guy really and truly a great guy and the fact that he is you know he started the station so that he can always, serve the community i feel when you talk about me is because you have nothing else to talk about that is not true you know you know when people do that they're like what did you not plan on you have a nice guest here and <laughs> You have a show to do, and you're saying, let's just push, let's just raise Richard up, because either A, after the show, you're going to tell me something really bad, or B, you have no idea what you want to talk about, so... Richard, you know I always know what I want to talk about. You know that. It is just that I wanted to give you a little 
kudos today. I, know, I agree. And give you Thank a, you. I appreciate it. And some encouragement, which el- we all want encouragement, Richard. All of us want encouragement, Richard. It's good for us. But anyway, I, I do have a very special guest here today. And I told him, that usually I talk about, you know, things that are going on, even political stuff. And uh, and Doreen, her, her daughter, Doreen is with her, and uh, with Dot Muter. We, I've been telling you about Dot Muter. Murder. I'm sorry, murder. It's murder. It's murder. And I kept saying murder. I went, no, wait a minute. This can't be right. But it's, uh, Dot Murder's with me. Uh, she is 90 years old, almost 90 years old. And her daughter is with us. And uh, I just went and videotaped her at the Chop House. The Chop House is the Conroe House of Prayer and where they serve and uh, feed the homeless. And it's amazing. And so she is not letting being almost 90 years old give her an excuse to stay at home and watch uh the housewives of atlanta she is actually out doing something uh good and 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 good for people and good for her and uh and we're going to talk about that today about when somebody feels like they need to really give up or when they do here's the time they really need to get busy but things have been going on, and I didn't even get to all the stuff, the political stuff I, I wanted to yesterday. So, Dot, you know, suspend your hearing right now because I'm going to talk politics. And, you know, my mother, I don't know if your mother taught you this, but my mother said, never talk about politics or religion. Just don't talk about it. Well, you know what? Those are the two things I love to talk about the most. And so I've been watching this political game. and, and Is it because I, you've been so oppressed over the years as a, as a grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> that not, you now finally have a voice. That's, <laughs> you know, that's I true. love messing with you. That's, that's not, that is so true. I, I can't believe I have a voice on radio and that there are random people out there because this goes all over the world. It's on the Internet, so it's everywhere. And uh, and so anybody that's clicking in and and accidentally gets the show, that uh, they're probably thinking, what is she talking about? But I... Uh, That's why I'm wondering when we go FM in April, yeah. what's going to happen to all those random listeners driving through Conroe <laughs> and have these stereotypes about people from Conroe and they hear you on the radio and like, oh, she must be from Conroe. Sure. <laughs> No, then, then you Shut have to clarify, up. no, I'm from Willis. <laughs> and then like, oh, Willis. <laughs> that oh. makes it even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand that. No, they're going to be thinking they just had tapped into this national, this must be coming straight out of California or New York. I just, I love this show. And uh, and so, you know, because I really do believe, and I, I know you guys think, oh, Cindy, you're blowing smoke. That is not true. But every time I get, when I leave the show, I'm on from 10 to 11. And then I go sit in the car and I listen to Rush Limbaugh. And Rush Limbaugh is just repeating everything I just I go like, is he listening to my show? I just think that we have some evidence that he's listening to the show. Uh, either that or we are on cutting edge. And we do uh, talk about themes and things that went on uh, that everybody else is talking about. And that's why I love to listen to talk radio. And then a lot of people go like, oh, please talk about the Housewives of Atlanta, because I don't want to talk about politics, but some things are happening that just infuriated me. And if you watch TV, if you watch the news, you saw President Obama, our President Obama in Cuba. And when this thing happened in Brussels, all these people were killed. These, this, this terrorist act that happened in Brussels, Brussels and uh, at the the airport in two other different locations, a hundred uh, you know, 187 people were injured, 35 dead. What, you know, and so our president comments on this at a, at a baseball game that he's at in Cuba, and he's doing the wave with all the fans. And so somebody puts the microphone from him, and he comments while this is all going on behind him. You know, these terrorist acts are terrible, and we have got to get this under control, And, and uh, but but just don't let it uh, upset your normal life. Just go about what you're doing, because we're not going to let them win. We're going to do get in this all together. All this is going on behind what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, da, 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 you know, things are going on. Baseball, you know, they're playing uh, baseball, I, I think. Yeah, baseball. And all this crowd noise is going on while he's doing... A, here's what I think about the terrorist act that happened in Brussels. I don't get that. And then to let that Raul Castro, let let him sit and 
lecture our president on the things that we're doing wrong here and that we you know they forget that we were the ones that kept them from being part of Spain we have we gave them freedom from that and they are this guy's up there lecturing Obama telling him why that uh, we better give back Guantanamo Bay to them we better give back um all the things that, that he feels like we've taken from them, lift the blockade. And it's funny, it hadn't been called a blockade in forever. They, I think all the Cuban people feel like there's all these lines of American ships that are waiting to, uh, to stop anything that's getting ready to come into uh, Cuba. But all that's going on, and there he is doing the wave at the baseball game. I think somebody needs to say, Mr. President, it's probably best if we step outside where the, the cheering and all the stuff's not going on in the background so that we can... We can hear what you're saying. Uh, this would make it a lot more presidential. So, but anyway, you know, nobody calls me and asks me these things. I'm, I'm here to consult. I'm here to, to uh, give them advice, just like I've been trying to get Hillary to call me, and, and she doesn't call, and I don't get it. But uh, it's okay. I, I, I was just trying to give you some advice about not having Bill on the road trying to promote you when the things that he says and get you in trouble. You know, and and then what pantsuit you're going to wear, you need to call me. There's certain colors, girl, you shouldn't be wearing. The red pantsuit looked good with the high collar. The that was that was good. But anyway, there there are things that um, you know, right here on the Cindy Cochran show, we could help. We could help those uh, politicians. Now, Donald Trump, maybe not so much, but he has a will of his own. And uh, and people love this guy. They love this guy. But, you know, the establishment and everybody's trying so hard to fight to keep him from getting that magic number of 1237 so that he can walk into that convention and be the top guy. But that may not happen. You know, Cruz won. He won in uh, Utah yesterday. And uh, Trump won Arizona. So Arizona is the take all. And uh of course, Cruz has got to share it with John Kasich. John Kasich, when, my friend, or you think you're going to step out of this race? I just don't get it. And so you're helping, you're helping the Trump train, and it's hard to stop a Trump. So you just got, you've got to figure it out. And if you're going to stay in this for the long haul and go to the convention and do, I, I don't know. But everybody's starting. I, I don't know if they're going to put the convention on pay-per-view because this is going to be so popular for people to watch this they can't believe it i know i'm going to have my popcorn and my drinks and all the stuff ready to watch this convention because this is going to be the most entertaining thing i have ever seen in my life listen guys we have got an amazing guest i mean she has seen it all she is almost 90 years old she has seen more things more conventions more politicians than she'd ever want to see and uh and she may have some very wise advice for us and she's shaking her head but i'm not believing it so we've got dot murder here with us and she is going to uh, to talk about her volunteering at 90 years old listen we've got a lot to say here on the cindy cochran show and we're gonna say it so don't go away we'll be right back the cindy cochran show the first daily talk show serving montgomery county Our community's animal shelters cannot absorb accidental litters of kittens and puppies. Approximately 80% of the animals entering our shelters will not make it out alive. Please help be a part of the solution. Please spay and neuter your pets. Many low-cost options are available. Visit TexasLitterControl.org to learn more. That's TexasLitterControl.org. And remember, real Texans don't litter. Please spay and neuter your pets. Tune in to Chamber Chat with your host, Courtney Galley and Samantha Good, with the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce every first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. I'm one of your hosts, Courtney Galley. Samantha and I will chat about the Conroe Chamber's upcoming events and programs for the month. Relax with a cup of joe or your favorite drink for Chamber Chat. At Jazzy Junk, volunteers reclaim, restore, 
and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a non-profit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques, books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today, gone today. So remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection. Jazzy Junk is located in the outlets at Conroe on League Line Road and I-45 North. Call 936-441-4500 or visit our website jazzyjunk.org. That's J-U-N-Q-U-E for more information and store hours. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, Unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. Thank you so much for listening. We love our listeners. Yes, we do. We know you have a choice of so many stations to listen to, but but Lone Star Internet Radio, uh, the community radio, is going to be your one place you need to. It's like one stop listening. You just come here, find out what's going on in the world today. And uh, meet some interesting people, and that's what we're going to do right now. I have with me Dot Murder, and she is uh, with her her daughter Doreen. Doreen Helton. Elt- Elton Helton or Helton Helton with a hell Helt. Oh, good Helton Helton and Murder. Uh, you guys <laughs> are quite a pair. <laughs> and uh, Doreen was a teacher with uh, Murder uh, last name. Uh, and she said that was fun to do right with the kids. Would they would they really make fun of that? Would they say, "Are you going to murder us?" Huh? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I got called Miss Murderer by the little ones, not thinking <laughs> Miss Murderer. <laughs> I love it. So, um, and sometimes you probably felt like murdering them. What what grade did you teach? I I uh, taught health and physical education, and I taught three year olds all the way up through seniors. Good I had grief! The whole gamut of places or ages so which because my oldest daughter is getting ready to graduate she's in her 40s and she's getting ready to graduate to be a teacher and she has taught did student teaching with fifth grade and with first grade and she says i don't know which is worse <laughs> so she needs some counsel from people like if you can choose then choose what grade would you choose out of those two uh uh-huh. oh that's a tough one yeah. um i like first grade you do, you do. Mm-hmm. They're so sweet and innocent at that time. Mm-hmm. Fifth grade, she said, "Mom, they're like, I mean, like they could take you out. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are, you know." So she's uh, she's really been upset about that. But teaching is so great, and I know that you've had the best teacher in your mom, Dot Murder. Absolutely. And Dot, I, when I met you, it's funny. I, I saw you at uh, Conroe Church of Christ, and mm-hmm. on a Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. And she was running around talking to different people, and her haircut was so cute. I had to comment on. It. My mom had a haircut very similar. She called it a knuckle cut because she'd put her hand up through her hair, and anything sticking past the knuckle, she cut off. <laughs> and so, but it's so fashionable right now with this. Your hair is so cute. So that's why I said, I said, you have got the cutest haircut. And she went, oh, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, but I. I I've uh, I've heard so much about you and uh, that people just just adore you. And uh, she was at the chop house this morning, bright and early this morning with Doreen. Doreen was serving the food, and uh, Dot told me it was kind of weird the first time I came in there. What did you mm-hmm. tell me about the first time you went to the chop house? I thought at that time uh, my health was not as good as it is now, and um, really I couldn't stand on my feet that much. And uh, most of the actual work involved is standing on your feet and serving um, people. Right. And uh, I thought, I know I I need to be here. I need to uh, to be with these people. And um, but what do I do? So uh, I just took 
my chair, my daughter took my chair and, and we went in and we put my chair up and I just sat there and, and I was whatever I could be to whoever I could be. And at first, of course, I was strange to them. They were a little strange, although I don't really know strangers too much. But, I don't think you do. Uh, no. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, and, and even for several weeks after that, I thought, you know, and I thought, well, you know, everybody's saying to me, well, this church isn't friendly or that church isn't friendly. Mm-hmm. And I think, well, how friendly were you? How, how much did you... Amen, you know, brother. How, You're how far right. did you put yourself into this? You're you right. Know? You're and right. I thought, I'm doing the same thing. I'm mm-hmm. sitting here thinking, well, there's nothing I can do. So I just started trying to be myself. And, and you uh, used your best gift that God gave you. What was that? Just talking and... <laughs> cared about people i mean uh, you know you told me that you said um i said i bet you go up and talk to people first mm -hmm. and she said oh yes and my daughter says i don't have to talk to everyone (laughs) (laughs) so so, um i understand that because that's in my nature is that i don't wait for people to talk to me because most people it's hard for them to approach someone and say hello how are you doing and a lot of times these churches have to have professional greeters not mean they're paid but they're just people that they have that in their nature to be very friendly and and open and all that Mm -hmm. and so you have that and i saw that today i saw you going around talking to people and what you told me you said you know you told god look i i can't do much but i can talk Mm -hmm. and so i can talk to them and a lot of times they want somebody to listen to them, don't they? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A young lady came up to me today that I've known. She was one of the first ones that I met there. And she's gotten a home. She's gotten a place to live. And she came up and sat next to my chair. And um, We just hugged. That's so we great. Didn't, we didn't really have to say anything no. because I knew that she had moved into her house last week. Sometimes that says a whole lot, doesn't it? It's that's just prayer. Amazing. That's prayer. Uh-huh. And they, that's what it is—a house of prayer. Yeah, you're, no, you're right. I saw so many people praying, and they would just grab hold of somebody and just oh, it was great. I just, mm-hmm. uh, but I. I I loved the energy that you gave, and people will come up and and you said they call you uh, Mima, yeah, is or it, Mama, or, or Mama. The first one that called me Mama, I really, <laughs> I just loved it, just positively loved it. I'd never been called Mama before. Well, they and, uh, they've uh, they've they've certainly adopted you, yeah, as well, part of the family. You know, I'm from the north, and you don't Mama too much up north. And uh, really, so that was that, yeah, yeah, you don't mom. Too what do you much. say, mom? Or mom, or mm-hmm. just mom, yeah, mom. So, mama, mama is a southern thing. Well, it might be I because didn't. I, I never, I mean, <laughs> as you say, I'm going on 90 in December and uh, I, I haven't heard it up there, but right. I have lived in Tennessee and I've lived in southern states and, and, uh, and I remembered back to that when, she, when he called me mama and I just loved it. You know what, Dot? I, I remember sometime in the 60s that the fad became among my uh, my friends that you called your mom my old lady. And mm-hmm. that became like the thing to do is to say my old lady this and that. Mm-hmm. So, and the first time I said to my mom, uh, I said, hey, old lady. Mm-hmm. That was the last time those words ever came out of my mouth again. Once my mouth healed, mm-hmm. uh, it was the last time I I said that because she said that is so disrespectful and uh, and I said it is, but it was like the kids said that, so I thought it was like okay to do that. Mm-hmm. But I understand that I understand mm-hmm. that now, mm-hmm. and it would uh, and my kids would bring their friends over and they say you can call her mom, you can call her mom, and I go like no no because your mom is at home. And I wouldn't let my children call your mom because I'm the mom. I'm mm-hmm. you know, like so. I realized that's, I was kind of jealous about that. And and how many kids love to to do that? But I'm telling you, um, the group there, who largely are homeless and are in in dire needs and dire straits of things that they you know things that they need. But the one thing that they is somebody to hug. Mm-hmm. And and you said, you know what? They needed an old lady here. Mm. They they she told mm-hmm. me they mm-hmm. needed a grandma, and you've become that. That's got to be very enrich enriching for you. So when you leave that place every Wednesday, how do you feel? I feel like I've just left my part of my family. Yeah, that's well. They love you, and I can tell they love you. And that's so sweet of you to do that. Dot, I ask you about the fact that. 
uh, at age 90, you're still volunteering. You're still going and doing things uh, with the help of your sweet daughter, Doreen. Mm-hmm. And uh, she is, um, she's your angel that Positively. takes you where, where, she, where you need to go. But you're so busy. You're so busy doing things. Doreen, did you ever think at this age that you would be taking her to uh, to places that you take her and then to a radio show to be interviewed? <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> Good. Okay, cross that off your bucket list. That's right. Dot, that's, that's right. right. Uh, but, well, she was always, she's always been active. So, uh-huh. you know, and always serving. So I'm, in one sense, I'm not surprised. But yes, I understand what you mean, too. It right. wasn't something that that um, we've had the opportunity to do a lot of, but now that we've both moved down here together right, and living together, then we're able to help each other out with that. See, that's that's awesome. And, and I think the time that you get to spend together, the quality time and all that, it's just, you're so fortunate because a lot of people say, I wish I had my mommy here so mm-hmm. I, could, I could talk to mm-hmm. my mom or call her mommy. But I think that uh, it's such an inspiration to so many people. Dot, mm-hmm. you, are, you are inspiring a lot of people that... Mm-hmm feel like they they could give up that, that they don't have to do this anymore and they don't have to go and help people anymore tell me how you feel about that because i remember uh when we did the interview i did the interview with you what you said was very you know that's so true hmm. well i don't remember what i said before but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good thing because it may have been bad no but you said a really good thing about you you've read the scriptures and you haven't found a scripture mm. yet oh yes i haven't found any scripture that tells you when you're finished living for the lord and <laughs> uh, and loving him uh, i i i just look forward to loving him in person to, face That's to right. face uh i've felt his touch before mm-hmm. i have definitely done that but of course i've never seen him and uh it's a wonderful thing to look forward to. But you know what's so so very, very cool about whenever you uh, you practice a Christian faith and, and uh, or any faith that you believe in God, that, that we believe in Jesus and that sometimes the way somebody acts, how much they love, how much they care and give, you feel like, you know, this may be the closest I'll come to earth uh, to someone like Jesus and so and I think your heart and your caring somebody can see Jesus in you and that may that's close enough (laughs) you know that's close Mm -hmm. enough for right now and and that um, I've known people like that and I go like oh man I just I close my eyes and I feel like that's what he would say and that's what he would do and those kind of things that that uh, are so precious and Mm -hmm. so sweet and that you live the principles of you know of the bible and a lot of people do and there's a lot of different Mm -hmm. people that that practice their faith in different ways and we know a loving Mm -hmm. father is watching and they know the intent of the heart and that's what i always i'm Mm -hmm. so glad that he's the one judging and not men uh, you know judging uh, whether we're going to uh, be saved or not he knows everything Mm -hmm. about us Mm -hmm. and i know it's a tendency as we get older to to feel like um uh well all I can do is pray. Mm-hmm. All all I can do is pray. Like it's uh, like it's not good. Mm-hmm. Like it's like they're not really doing anything. But how but, powerful! But how powerful <laughs> yeah. they are! I mean, for someone to be praying for you is just uh, huge. The old, you know, I mean, how can you <laughs> get is. any better than that? Well, you know, and um, it's it's so fun. I remember going. We go to lunch with our preacher at one of the churches I was working at, and. He would, uh, the waitress would come over and said, uh, you know, what can I do for y'all? And he said, no, what can we do for you? And uh, he, she said, what do you mean? Uh, he said, was there anything you would like for us to pray for you, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. about? And a lot of times that just opened up a floodgate of, yes, I've got this trouble. I got that trouble. And, and they were so happy. Somebody asked, you know, what they, they could do. And uh, it just made her day, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh she, I think she was afraid that we may not tip well, but <laughs> I think she still got a. She says, "This isn't the only tip I'm going to get right today." And we said, "No, no, no, no. We're going to tip you too." <laughs> it, was, it was good. So um, I, I think there's just a nature, of, and and uh, and you've you've seen this, you've felt this over you know your span of lifetime, is that people can walk into a room, and you either have the sense of, "Wow, I like this person. I I want to go 
be their friend. I want to talk to them. I want to be near them. And because that person is so easy and feel like accessible to uh, come talk to. And then there are people that you feel like, oh, man, I, I wouldn't give two seconds to that person because they don't look like or they don't feel like and so there is a feeling you get about people but i found that a lot of times it's wrong the first impression is Mm -hmm. wrong Mm -hmm. and when i would go to different churches my husband uh was not a member of the church or anything and so we would go to places and i'd walk in and i'd go up and greet everybody hi and they think they they thought i'd been going there a long time i said no i just we just drove in and i just want to say how do you i'm so happy to be here Mm -hmm. And that breaks it down. That just breaks it down. We're going to be right back with Dot Murder and her daughter, uh, Doreen. And you guys don't go away. We've got a lot of history to cover. The Cindy Cochran Show. Real Reality Radio. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton and I want to invite you to join me every Saturday morning right here on Lone Star Internet Radio from 8 to 9 or Outdoors with Luke Clayton and Friends. Bill Dance is a frequent guest. Larry Weissoon, Mr. Whitetail, is on the show every week. We talk a lot of hunting and fishing and generally have a good time. So remember, every Saturday morning, 8 to 9, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. The Conroe YMCA's benchmark adaptive programming for kids and adults is Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith is an equine assisted therapy program serving children and adults with adaptive needs. The riders in our Leap of Faith program are working to address and manage specific aspects of their lives impacted by illness, injury, or disability. The Leap of Faith program has experience working with riders who are living with attention deficit or other hyperactivity disorders, hearing impairments, visual impairments, developmental delays or disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, head traumas, brain injuries, and paralysis. Our program uses horseback riding to develop self-confidence and self-esteem, to increase upper and lower body strength, assist in respiratory issues, and establish a trusting relationship between the rider and their horse. Not only do these activities aid in the physical and mental development of the rider, but they also foster self-reliance and independence. For more information regarding our program, to become a rider, or to volunteer with a great group of people, please call our Welcome Center at 936-441-9622 or visit our website at www.ymcahouston.org slash Conrad. The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. We just got a uh, message from uh, Samantha who said that she's listening to the show and she said, Dot is adorable. She said, you're adorable. <laughs> See, and, um, you know, Thank here you, you are. <laughs> here you are. Uh, you know, and they can't even see you. They can't even see you, but you just come across so mm. sweet, so, so cute. And uh, and you do too, Doreen. You know, Thanks. Doreen, you are... Uh, you're the one that keeps her going. You're the one that keeps her uh, where she's going. And uh, and I just appreciate you so much for what you're doing. And so, I do, too. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you did. You do. Uh, you just said, when we were in the break, you said, you know, a lot of times those people that look like they're the most unapproachable, what did you say about them? They need to be approached more, and they really are waiting really it seems like to me sometimes um i started to relate a story to uh, cindy about uh the people that i that i talk to in the grocery stores and off a lot of them i see them sitting on the benches uh-huh. uh, just sitting there 
and they uh, to look at them you would think what a bad mood they're in right or something right. because uh, it just you're you're it just happens that way sometimes and I'll go over and and, and of course if they're having a broken leg or something like that I'll just ask them how did you break your leg uh-huh um, and uh, they're so happy to, to relate talk. that yes. story to you right young and right. old young and old and their bright their faces brighten up and it's just um, uh, it's just a feeling that you can't get any other way. You know, except- people people feel like they're powerless. They feel so, you know, ineffect- ineffective. They don't feel like they could really change anything about the, anybody else's life or anything like that. But, you know, smiling at people is a powerful thing because me smiling at someone walking down, they'll smile back. Most, I mean, there's going to mm-hmm. be times when somebody's like, oh my mm-hmm. God, I'm not, I'm, you're not going to make me smile. But, but they do. And that's a powerful thing thing that we have to uh, mm-hmm. to break the ice to make someone feel a little bit better to open the door for somebody and hold the door for somebody open the door is for a Jesus big to, deal to that's, walk in that's exactly when right you, when you start talking to somebody and then you just it, even if you don't say it until you're ready to leave that person uh-huh. well i want you to know that i'm certainly going to pray for you right and most of the i've never had anybody yet say to me oh no don't do that uh, isn't that the truth they've always always said to me thank you so much i appreciate that it's like i don't think i've ever heard anyone say oh please don't compliment me again no, I, exactly. I don't need any more compliments <laughs> i don't need you to you know don't do that uh because it it is something that deep down you know someone says something to you like i you're i love the way you got your hair cut it looks so good it makes you just look so good your just face just pops and you're just you know so vibrant it looks you look 10 years younger you will chew on that compliment all day long mm-hmm. it's just amazing you know and people don't realize the power that what a passing just a passing thing like oh i like your dress you look cute have you lost weight i don't hear that much but uh, anyway but when <laughs> when they say something nice you just you take that with you, and mm-hmm. it does brighten your day. So you have a lot of power to give. And the most amazing, miraculous thing is as you do that to people, you feel better. Mm-hmm. Now, how did that mm-hmm. work out? I'm making you feel good by what I say, but I feel even better inside. And that, to me, is is probably God. Because you're worshiping God, well, actually. As you do that. As you do that, you're, you're right. When you spread that love around, and love is everything. But God must sit up there and go like, oh, God. You know, you know, you know how good you felt when you did that. You could feel that way all the time. I'm trying to show you that you've got, you've got power to create the mood you want to do, and that's what I like about you, Dot. Is that you have not let any outside circumstances or society dictate to you how you're going to feel and how you're going to live your life. This is not, you know, you're not allowing that to happen or bring you down. That you know, you have the skills to bring yourself up through through Christ, through, through Jesus through, Christ, through God that has given us all this power inside of us, and we don't use it. So I, I, I she's got to be an inspiration for you during a lot of times when you're down and and go like, wait a minute, if she can get up and get ready and go do this, I've got to be able to do this too. For crying out loud, she's almost Absolutely. ninety. Absolutely, yeah. So that's what I mean. You're, you play an important part just by breathing in and out regularly. You know, that's good, Dot. And the, but that you that you're so it's happy. An important part of my life. Yes. <laughs> that's right. You got to get up and check that obit section and go like, no, I'm not in the obit mm-hmm. section today in the newspaper. I've got uh-huh. a chance. And every day is like a new day. Mm-hmm. And when you said, when you told me that uh, that you come alive, you just come alive, and uh, in in giving to people, you know, the message of love and that you can talk to them, you can listen to them and you can hug them and you can smile and, and just those words of encouragement. That's, that's so huge for people to be able to understand. Mm. It's a powerful, you know, a powerful attribute that God gives you as uh, as being a child and he wants you to be happy. So he gives you those things. Here's the way to make yourself happy while you're making somebody mm. else happy. So mm-hmm. I just I, I love There's it. There's nothing that makes me sad or than when I when I get too wrapped up in myself. Uh, Doreen could tell you. I'll say to her every once in a while, I'm getting too wrapped up in Dot. 
and <laughs> <Don't> because <laughs> it, I have a whole different, whole different feeling. I mean, my life is not happy. No, it's not. It, it's, it's interesting. That's it's, it's just so strange it, because it doesn't make sense to the way that society tells you you should be. If, if you've got a lot of aches and ailments and all that, then you should just sit down and you know and give up because they really f- make you feel that way but mm-hmm. as and we have to know that everybody cannot do everything no that's exactly right and like you're saying if you can just if you can send a card if you can make a call if you can just you know encourage anybody that you come in contact with if you're in if you're in the hospital and the nurses come in you can make them i have been in the hospital and and just because you're friendly and i mean i wasn't doing anything you know special but it was just that just because i was friendly they would that's come back fair. in. That's friend, friendly is special. They they would come back in and want to talk to me about things that are going on, and they wanted to like, how can you be so happy in this situation? And I'm not saying, believe me, I get down and and you know, and I have mm-hmm. to slap myself around like Cindy. Mm-hmm. You know, there. My mother never let us enjoy any malady. She would always say, look, somebody else has it a lot worse. This is nothing. This you could have this, and she'd always do that. And I go, mother, could you just let me enjoy this? You know, feeling bad today, this just <laughs> once, just once. Give me that. Give, let me have, let me enjoy this because sometimes we do like to wallow in it, don't we, Doreen? Mm-hmm. We do. We yeah. do. And how do you get out of it, Doreen? But except, you know, I mean, you got your mom there, but how do you get out of it? And well, okay, Richard. Richard gives me these signs like we got three minutes, two minutes. Right, and that was the microphone and, sign. And, and, <laughs> I think and he, he does scare people. Okay, uh, well, I, I agree with you. You've got to get out and you've got to find something to do for someone. You've got yeah. to, you know, uh, pray about it. You've got a lot of different ways you can go do something. You know, uh, enjoy, enjoy the moment, and. Uh, um, you know, obviously, if someone that can help pick you up and that kind of thing, so mm-hmm. that's always that's that's, that's a helpful. power that she that she has. I mean, it, it, and you don't see it that way, and you're not exploiting it in the sense that you're trying to get attention or you know, like, oh, I'm so great and so wonderful. It's just that that's your nature, and that you have developed that in serving people. You found out how much more you you uh, benefit from it, mm-hmm. and it's just trying to remember that. Every day trying to remember that and, and be aware of it is, is I think great. I think one thing that, that really helps me a lot uh, with my walk with the Lord is talking to him very often. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll just, um, I, I enjoy just talking to him. And, and people, you know, no that's, should, that's how you work up friendships and relationships. And bond is, with someone is talking, is talking to, to them. And and you feel like yeah, but he doesn't answer you back. Oh, but yeah, he does. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. <laughs> and people here. think like yeah, here. I know that uh, Doreen brought you to Texas, and you came here, and you uh, you had been for how many years? Where were you? Where were you? I was up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, for Pennsylvania. fifteen years. Okay, and that and that she has stayed. Where she, when you brought her right. from Pennsylvania? Well, yes, but she was from Delaware. We grew up in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and then. She moved to Delaware after we moved to Bethlehem. Obviously, okay. all the states are real close together. Up there. Yeah, see, we don't understand that. Right, at all. exactly. It's so weird. Is not- <laughs> Her dad died right after she got out of college. Oh, okay. He's been gone for 30 years, my husband. Right. And so in that time, she was still living at home for some of that time. And then, of course, then she married. But I was in the same house. And then I moved to Delaware. Right. Well, so uh, you so you came so it was a big culture shock coming into Texas though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'll say it. I'll go ahead. Um I always said through things that I'd heard about Texas. I'd visited Texas a little bit, but through things that I had heard people telling me that, uh-huh. I had decided Texas would be the last I would never <laughs> live in Texas. I would never live in Texas. Right. Right. So when I left my former church, they uh-huh. had me get out and say a little something before I left and I said, "Well, I always said Texas will be the last place that I'll ever live. And I said, God has such a sense of humor. I said, here I am at almost 90 years old moving to Texas. So I said, you know where it's going to be my last place to live. 
<laughs> See, we knew you. you know, that how and I know. love it. And yeah. I love it. Well, I that's what's really so wonderful is that is that you were able to, and I know that that Doreen had done some church seeking for you, oh. and uh, <laughs> Doreen is. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you ended up at the very right place that God wanted you uh, and to help us. We're so glad that you came to us. But that had to be frightening, uh, like, because you're right. When you're in a church family for a long time, and I tell people, I said, find a church. You know, like, I'm just telling you, find a church home. Like when you go looking for a house, you walk in and you know I can live here or I can worship here and all that. And it's just to find some place to get connected with people that have got you know their their agenda is just that people are helped and served and that uh, and that we all get to heaven i'll get to, there's a song in that mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. and that we, we that's all what get to heaven. that's what i'm hoping that uh, that people will will do because it, you know the fact that if something happened to you if you were sick doreen got sick or anything like that there'd be church ladies all over that place you know serving mm-hmm. you food uh, taking you places you need to go and all that that's what that's what we do and that's what what makes us feel really good that's why yeah. i you know when when the government started taking a lot of that away from churches that that we were very benevolent we helped people find houses we you know the church did so much for helping people and then the government came in and and started doing a lot of the stuff and, and kind of took that away and that's a shame and that's a shame now where we go they're still doing all of that mm-hmm. they they haven't you know they haven't stopped that and um, i like um, I, I love our wednesday nights because my I firmly believe if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> and so it's it's great for us to have that fellowship mm-hmm. and all that. And if people are visiting there, they can, you know, it's free. It's a free meal mm-hmm. and until you become a member. Now, sometimes you get a free visitor's parking place and you get free meal on Wednesday nights. I'm trying to come up with the incentive for them to... <laughs> <laughs> to make somebody want to become a member there <laughs> it's like you're giving all this stuff away but uh but it is great and you're going to be there easter mm-hmm. aren't you you're gonna be there easter and, and oh, there's really? going to be a video mm-hmm. of you uh so of of all the things that you have been doing and about your life and uh the easter at uh, conroe church of christ is on longmire they're having a lot of things for the kids and uh, and for adults and it's also for people that are in need things that if you have financial needs they're going to have they're coming for me Dora dot they're yes, coming I for think me so <laughs> so listen i, I we got to go to a break cuz we'll, let's find out what this is all about no no they're just passing by uh anyway you're listening to the Sydney Cochran show we'll be right back we've got our last segment coming up and we're going to say goodbye to dot and uh, and her uh, her daughter Doreen and so don't go away we'll be right back the Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. The East Texas Dream Center is in need of your help. We are a nonprofit Christian organization that houses women and children who are trying to get their lives back after being homeless, abused, or addicted. We are conveniently located at 301 South First Street, Conroe, Texas, 77301, right here in Montgomery County. Our needs are financial and every needs of gasoline, cleaning supplies, laundry soap, Lysol, and whatever else God puts in your heart. To help our ladies and children, please consider a donation. You may visit our website at www.EastTexasDreamCenter.org. Again, so you don't forget, it's www.EastTexasDreamCenter.org. Donations are tax deductible. Remember what Jesus said, with God, nothing is impossible. Hello, I'm Bonita DeRosa, Animal Control Officer for the City of Willis. We invite you to tune in to Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. for the Willis Hour. On the first Thursday of the month, the Willis Hour will be covering upcoming events and news about the city. Join in the conversation with your city officials and other leaders in the community. On the third, we will be doing a recap of the last city council meeting. The mission of the City of Willis is to provide high quality services, accountability, and professional commitment to our citizens. We pledge to provide those who live, work, and visit our city an effective government that is open and responsive to the needs and values of the community. Again, we invite you to tune in on Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 for the Willis Hour. 
In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. SPCA Pet Snap of Montgomery County is a 501c3 all-volunteer based rescue and adoption organization with a no-kill policy for healthy and adoptable animals. Our goals are fourfold, to rescue and rehabilitate homeless animals, to provide a safe haven for the animals until a suitable adoption or foster care home is found or until they are reunited with their owner, to educate the public about the great need to reduce pet population, which includes the importance of having their pets spayed and neutered, and to further the cause for humane and responsible pet ownership, and to provide a low-cost spay-neuter clinic for people who are unable to afford to spay or neuter their pets otherwise. SPCA Pet Snap of Montgomery County encourages you to think adoption first. You can contact us at www.spcaofmc.com. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. This is our last segment. We only got a few minutes left. We had so much fun. It's gone by so fast. And, uh, you know, I think... Maybe Dot Mercer, who I'm talking to right now, and her daughter Doreen, is that it was, um, she thought, like, well, what could we talk about for an hour? <laughs> oh, my word. You don't know Dot. Dot. I say you never know <laughs> yeah. to talk an hour. <laughs> Dot, we can talk and talk and talk, and that's what's so great about you. You know, I wanted to ask Dot, you know, like, you're almost 90 years old, and uh, so you've seen a lot, you've experienced a lot, a lot has passed, you know, your eyes that you've seen like that development of that is just amazing we have grown we have you know we've gone backwards on on some things maybe but you've seen so much what do you think is like the most impactful thing that you've seen in uh, in your lifespan well um i've lived a long time so you know i've seen a lot right i've um been uh, not in wars but i've been through wars Mm -hmm. i've been through floods i've been through storms of all kinds uh, family problems in and out but i guess the the thing that i think of more than anything else when i think of that is that my sister was the first one that she said to me she's uh, she always said to me anything that came up she would say well, Dot, you're in a dream world. You just look, she said, you just look at things from a dream world. And I said, and I, I often thought, well, that's, you know, that's not real bad, but I didn't take it as a compliment all the time. <laughs> but, of course, especially coming from your sister. My sister, yeah. And, uh, but anyway, I got to thinking about that just earlier when we were sitting here, and I thought, I've always known that Jesus was there for me. I have always known that. And I've never really thought seriously about a lot of things that go on. And I guess that's terrible to admit. But I just know that God is is taking care of everything. Well, I think that that's right. He told me there was going to be all this. All those things were going to happen. He told me that this was going to happen. But here's the deal. It's like I tell people, I said, I talk about politics and all that, and I I laugh at people that get so involved in it because I said, you know, the deal is, is unless it has something to do with my salvation, whether Mm -hmm. I'm going to heaven or not, I'm not going to get that riled up over it. Uh, These things are important. A lot of these things happen, and you have to to dwell on them, but not to the point where it just makes you sick or you don't like somebody for it. Dot, thank you so much for being here. Doreen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You are an inspiration, and I just love you, and I just thank you all so, so much. Listen, guys, we're going to be here tomorrow, and I'm going to have somebody interview me 
interviewed me for a newspaper article on the air live. Lauren Swank from 19, uh, 1097 will be here. Thank you, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Yay!